will see. Okay, so today we are going to look at NEAT. So what is NEAT and why we care about it. So I'm going to bring up the presentation. Uh, there we go. Perfect. So let's go back. So So what is NEAT and uh, why does it matter? So whether you heard of this NEAT or not, so we're going to discover what it is and why we care about it. So NEAT means non-exercise activity thermogenesis. Need, which is the energy that we expend for everything we do that is not sleeping, eating, or sport-like exercise. It ranges from the energy expended walking to work, typing, performing yard work, undertaking agricultural tasks, and fidgeting. So basically it's a non-exercise activity. So everything that is not exercise, so it's everything that we, you know, we are not training. Thermogenesis is basically the energy that we spend, the calories that we burn. So it's very important to look at this um, for many different reasons. So this call is especially good for someone that is trying to lose weight, okay? Because we're gonna look at basically this way that probably we don't really look at um, that is going to increase the calories that we burn therefore it's going to make fat loss and you know weight loss and fat loss easier um, so as you can see so everything that is not exercise all right so working to work commuting if you have an active job you know where you stand up a lot um, obviously you know yard work uh, even cleaning the house, stuff like that, um, and also fidgeting. And I will go a little bit deeper into that soon. So why do we look at it? We look at it for this reason. Let me bring this up. Boom. So it is basically exercise activity thermogenesis. So the calories that we burn during training versus the non-exercise activity. So, um, what I say is exercise activity thermogenesis. So the calories that we burn from training um, contributes to 5% of the TDE, which is the um, total daily energy expenditure. Okay. So when you train for the hour, you know, let's say you train for an hour every day, you basically that's five percent of the total calorie that you burn. So keep in mind that even just you know even if you were just sleeping, you will still burn calories because obviously your body is is running right. You do you have digestion? Uh, blood is going around. You know the heart is pumping. You're breathing. Uh, well, as a digestion already, yeah. So, you know, your body is actually still working in the background, even if you're still sleeping. Um, and that, I think, is around 60 to 70% of your total daily uh, energy expenditure. So, you're really, you know, the most calories that you burn are actually burned even when you're at rest, okay? So, we have this... Uh, basal metabolic rate, which is called, also called BMR. Um, and then basically, you know, the energy that you spend even just by stay still, okay? Basic um, metabolic rate or BRMR, which is basically resting by anyway. So basically you're burning calories anyway, right? Um, when you do training, this contributes to only the 5%. Now, Non-exercise activity thermogenesis need can contribute up to 15% of TDE. 
All right, so if we look under, we can see exercise activity, thermogenesis. What's that? You train maybe one hour a day, two hours a day, every day, cool. But non-exercise activity, thermogenesis. So everything else that you do, it can be up to 15 hours a day, which is all the time that you are awake, right? Because as we said before, the need is everything that, that you do that is not sleeping, let's say, right? So by the moment that you are awake, you have the opportunity to burn more calories, okay? Everything you do, you're burning calories. You can up and down the stairs, you're walking to work, uh, you're cleaning the house, you're doing the washing, you know. Everything you do, you burn calories. And because we are awake, you know, was that 16 hours in the day? So let's say at non-exercise activity, it can be, you know, up to 15 hours a day. So when we compare exercise, so eat against the non-exercise, you know, the non-exercise is actually very powerful because first of all, it can contribute up to, what's that? 300% uh, more. So from, you know, instead of 5% is 15% more um, on the TDE. And then again, you know, while you can exercise maybe one hour a day, let's say you train very hard, you train two hours a day, you still have lots of opportunity when you're not training. The rest of the 15 hours in the day, there is still lots of stuff you can do to contribute to burning more calories. And why is that important? Well, because, you know, if you're trying to lose fat, if you're trying to get in down with the calories, of course, you don't want to necessarily always cut down food, 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 food. So at one point, you might want to, um, you know, increase the activity level, right? Or another option would be to increase your need. So, you know, just by moving more, and you know, in ways that we're gonna explore in a in a second, um, then you know we have our calorie deficit that we need. So this is something you know. Again, look just by looking at it, it's it's a massive um, percentage of um, calories that we know we might be losing on the way, right? Um, so something that I wanted to add, um, which I didn't put in the in the slide, um, maybe, maybe I'll do it after this. So question could be, right, so now that we know this is important, how can we increase it? Cool, so let's have a look. I put down just five ways to increase the need, all right? So we, um, if we keep food the same and we keep training the same, so if you eating the same food, let's say it's one of calories, same food, and you, you're training four times a week for one hour, let's say you keep this one the same. Now, if we increase meat, so the non-exercise activity thermogenesis, if we increase the activities that we do that is not exercise, keeping food and exercise the same, yes, we can increase calorie that we burn, therefore we can increase our fat loss. So this is a very important to see if your goal is fat loss. So number one, this is something that I really like, have walking meetings. So if you're, let's say, either working in a working office, which you might not right now because of the uh, pandemic and you're working from home and you have lots of phone calls, if you can, try to um, take it on the phone while you work. Either you work in the house or you go out in the street and have a little walk. So this is something I personally do if I have some calls with my clients and I do not need to be on the laptop, then I would prefer to walk around, okay? Just because, you know, I, I, tend, I try not to sit um, if I don't have to. In fact, even just now giving this presentation, I'm standing, all right? Um, so if you can, and you have lots of calls, stuff like that, try to do it on, um, try to do it while you're on, um, on the phone. Hello, Sanresh. Hi. I will, um, I will mute you for a little bit and then I will bring you back in, yeah? 
Yep, that's fine. Okay. So another way to increase your neat, um, <laughs> this one is cheeky, but I really like it. I actually, I, I made it up, is to drink more water. Now, I will tell you why. So if you drink more water, guess what? You're going to piss more, <laughs> okay? So actually for me, because I live, I live in a, so my flat is divided in two levels. So there is a second floor and we have a, like an attic. So for me, this is actually big because I'm drinking minimum two of these per day, okay? So I'm almost done, but I will drink more. And, you know, obviously I go to the toilet. I don't know, I don't count how many times I go to the toilet, but I go quite often. And I have a bathroom, I work upstairs and I have a bathroom there. But every time I need to go to the toilet, I go downstairs. So I basically go up and down the stairs every time I need to, you know, go to the toilet. So drink more water, you will have to go to the toilet more and therefore you will probably get more steps in, okay? So this is a cheeky one, but you know, I actually, maybe I thought about it, I don't know, but I do, I do it automatically. Um, so I thought about that, that could be a good one. Plus you kill two birds with one stone. So you drink more water and you move more, win-win. And -win. Um, so the number three, this one, Okay, you invest in an activity tracker, like a Fitbit or an Apple Watch, something like that. So there is two reasons. Now you don't have to buy one because most um, smartphones have it already inside, inside them. For example, uh, if you have an Apple iPhone, um, there is an Apple Health, which basically will tell you the, the steps that you have in a day. So now I'm at 15,000, but because I went for a run. Um, but for example, I know I own one just because my girlfriend gave it to me. Um, it's an old one, but basically if you have a, like a Fitbit, um, I think it will vibrate. It will give you like a notification when you sit for too long and it will tell you to move. It will basically tell you, move, you've been sitting for too long. So, you know, that could be a good kick. For, for you if you need that. Um, but again, most smartphones will tell you how many steps you do. So that's another way, you know, obviously getting the steps in is one of the greatest way to get your non-activity uh, exercise, no, non-exercise activity in. Um, so that's a good way to do it. Um, way number four, walk during your lunch break. So this one is really good, right? If, imagine, again, you know, we might or might not be in the office, working from home, whatever. If you have a lunch break, and obviously, you know, you, want, you might want to eat, 100%. So you eat, but you know, you basically you're sitting down at the desk, you sit down to eat, so you sit, you sit sitting down. Now, maybe, you know, eat, in five, 10 minutes. And then if you have this in a one hour lunch break, go for a walk, right? Uh, first of all, we lack the digestion. And second of all, you're gonna get the steps in. So this is another great way to get more steps in. Now, I will probably expand on that even more. Um, and I will probably, if possible, or make it happen, have like a, even just a 10 minutes walk after every meal especially like the, the, the main meal. So breakfast, lunch, and dinner. I know it might not be um, very practical to do sometimes, you know, especially if it's raining or whatever, but if you can, try to do that. Um, because it might be easier to break it down in like smaller chunks like that, like, you know, 10 minutes on breakfast, 10 minutes after lunch, 10 minutes after dinner, rather than, you know, taking an half an hour out of your time to go for a walk. Um, so that's a nice way also to get the steps in. And, and then the fifth way um, is to maybe perform more errands, right? So, you know, you need a toilet paper, you know, get out and go to the shop or like on purpose, right? Try, try to find things to do 
that get that get you moving throughout the day or maybe sweep the floor uh, do the washing do this do that try to move more around the house this will obviously increase you know your activity level um sometime and i'm sorry maybe i've done this with you guys as well if i'm on the phone and i don't need to be on the on the laptop sometime i might clean around the house i might sweep the floor but you know it's, for me it's just su such an automatic uh task that i know it doesn't really take any focus so i can be on the phone you know i can listen and limit some of my clean um or also there's something i do on especially on the weekends i wake up and then after i have my water with lemon and salt in the morning um i put some podcast in and I, I, if it's, the weather is good, I go out for a walk and you can listen to music, to a podcast, to an audio book, something like that. Or also, yeah, again, I just clean. I just listen to podcasts while I clean the house. And, you know, I basically, you know, I learn while I do errands, right? So, you know, instead of maybe paying someone to clean the house or whatever, you know, I do that in the meantime. So that's a little nice way for me to increase the activity level. Uh, some of them I do consciously, some of them I do unconsciously, but obviously if, if your goal again is to lose weight, to lose fat, I would probably look, okay, what am I doing throughout the day? Or what am I not doing? Like, am I sitting too much? Am I, you know, I'm staying still for too long? So there you have, you know, lots of room for improvement. Therefore, you know, if you can move more, boom, you don't even need to eat less or exercise more. You just need to move more throughout the day with little things, right? So perform more errands, walk after lunch, uh, walk when you're on the phone, stuff like that. Um, so, yeah, cool. So that's, um, I wanted to add something on this. Um, so little bracket. We often, you know, people talk a lot about metabolism and, you know, having a fast metabolism or having a slow metabolism. Now, we don't have, like, very clear, you know, why, the reason of this. Um, but I have, this is just my opinion. Um, and let's see if it makes sense. So, I noticed that, for example, me, um, I grew up as a chubby kid, okay? So I tend to be a little bit overweight. Um, I, I've been overweight for most of my life and I tend to gain weight very fast. So something that I noticed with me is that if I don't, let's say if I don't force myself to move, I'm actually like kind of lazy, right? So I will tend to move less and I'm a very... Well, I'm a calm person as well. Um, obviously now, you know, you might see me a little bit like that because I'm doing the presentation and everything, but I'm generally a very calm. Um, and, you know, again, I have this kind of tendency to put on weight. Now, I notice, and, you know, maybe have a look around or maybe even yourself. I noticed this, for example, there is a, there is a friend of mine. Uh, we grew up together. And I've always been jealous because this guy could eat, like, could eat. Like, he was eating, like, I think he was eating more than me. Like, portions and, you know, kind of, the kind of food he was eating. Like, he was eating bread, Nutella all the time, you know, pasta bowls, like, gigantic pasta bowls. And this motherfucker was this skinny, yeah? Always. And I was like, what the hell? Like, I'm not, you know, he's eating more than me. And I'm overweight. But now that I know all these things, I notice, I say, ah, you know, he, first of all, he's a little bit, probably like uh, he tends to be a bit anxious as a person rather than be like me, a little bit calmer. And he moves a lot. Like, um, that's what I said before, you know, also fidgeting is also like something that, you know, can contribute to need. So, you know, someone like talks and is always like kind of moving like that. So that there's also like, they probably they're burning more calories 
you know, throughout the day. Again, if you look at, you know, exercise only 5% and, you know, maybe one hour a day, when you have 15 hours, the rest of the day, that contributes um, to, you know, can burn more calories. And actually, now that I think about it, yeah, he also takes, you know, when he's on the phone, he moves a lot, like, he just moves more. So when it comes down to metabolism, or having a slower or having a fast metabolism, also, I mean, I don't think that there is like a, a different flame burning inside you that, you know, you just burn more calories out of the blue. Probably you just, well, if, if you feel like, you know, you're struggling to put on weight, basically you just, probably you're just moving more and you don't realize. Or in some cases, maybe you do a very active job. Um, like you move a lot, you know, rather than being on a desk. Um, or you just move more in general, right? You just, and you know, this just comes natural to you. You don't, maybe before you listen to this, you never notice it. But, you know, because I, you know, I studied these things, I know these things, then I start looking, okay, that guy is skinny. How does he move? How does he talk? What does he do? And then I look, okay, that guy is overweight. Um, and you can see it a little bit slower. It's like, hey, bro, you're right. Yeah, and he moves a little bit slower while the other guy is like, yeah, bro, right, man, yeah, yeah. You know, like, yeah, how's it going? You're right, yeah. He moves like, and you see, like, literally, like, fidgeting and just the body language is different. And for me, it was interesting. And then, you know, again, it's not a science. It's just an observation, but I start linking things together. And I'm like, okay, makes sense, makes sense. Um, so yeah, this is my little my little view. Uh, so guys, what I'm gonna do? Um, I'm gonna mute you both if you want. And um, question time. <laughs> did you did you guys know about the NEAT or did you ever think about it? I I personally had Sarancha, I personally did not know much about NEAT and I I'm I'm getting a bit of gist about the whole topic because I came at the very end. Um yeah. Uh, this is definitely the first time. What's the, if I quickly ask you? What's the what's what does NEAT stand for? Yeah, so, oh, so NEAT is the non-exercise activity thermogenesis. Uh, so basically, calories that we burn um, when you know whenever we're not sleeping, eating, or doing sports or exercise. Um, so basically, all the calories that we're burning the rest of the day when you, when we are awake. So it ranges from energy spent in walking to work, typing, performing, you know, work, uh, undertaking like agricultural tasks, fidgeting, and yeah, stuff like that, like walking and cleaning the house. Got you. Got you. Okay, cool. Um, I think I definitely relate to your friend 100%, uh, what you just mentioned, because I eat a hell lot of food and my portions are fairly big. I've definitely stopped eating uh, sort of pasta or any sort of gluten really predominantly because it sort of it doesn't suit my stomach that much and I, I've sort of started eating other brown rice and um, potatoes and uh, so I've, I've definitely substituted it for that but I as much as I eat uh, my weight will not move beyond 68 69 maximum 70 and if I stop going to the gym it comes back to the 68 79 that's like that's 68 69 that's that's the range that I literally just don't move beyond at all. <laughs> yeah. yeah, so, you know, that's why actually, that's why I brought that up because um, obviously this topic is a little bit more for people that want to lose fat, right? So how to increase the, this need to this non-exercise activity. So, you know, maybe working more and stuff like that. And it could be an overlooked way to increase calorie consumption, to lose fat, to lose weight. But now, you guys that are on the phone now, actually your goal is to put on muscles, right? Um, 
but knowing the same principle, knowing that, you know, basically there is 15 hours a day that we are awake and what we're doing during, during those 15 hours can contribute to the 15% of calorie that we burn, right? So knowing that, in your case, then we can kind of uh, reverse engineer. So now instead of, okay, we don't need to burn more because actually, you know, your goal is to, you actually want to eat more to gain weight, right? So what can we do yep. to, you know, to reverse that? So now we look, probably because of your, the way you are, your kind of metabolism, you're probably burning lots of calories here in this 15%. So what can we do to basically burn less calories? So, you know, even if you don't eat more, even if you just eat the same, you exercise the same, but if you can maybe in this case, in this case move less, maybe, you know, we can increase, you know, we can increase basically the calories that you, keep instead of consuming and therefore you know that could be a uh, muscle that you can build over time so mm -hmm. um, actually i i was listening and reading um so you you know these guys like the mr olympia right the very big bodybuilders yeah so, yep, yep. so basically I was reading and um, this guy said, oh, you know, when, when we are building muscle, like that phase of training that we really try to build muscles, um, basically all they're doing literally is they go to the gym, they train maybe once a day, but then for the rest of the day, they eat and nap and sleep, of course. <laughs> hmm. Yeah. Because... <laughs> then you know they wanna they wanna maximize every single calorie that they eat. So for them to you know to walk you know to the gym, it's you know too it's too many calories that they burn, and then they will eat, they will need to eat more. So some of these people they eat like a, a ridiculous amount of calories, ridiculous. Um, so for them, literally, all, you know, in that when they are into that phase, all they wanna do is just eat and sit on their bum <laughs> so they're trying to maximize the non actually non burning calories and um, obviously you know this is extreme of course but still i think you know maybe if you look you know maybe we can look at ourselves and say okay maybe if i move a little bit less in this way i can you know maybe i can rest a little bit more i can maybe help to increase whatever is the, you know, um, maximize this muscle building phase. Um, so, for example, you know, just as, I know that for you, this is very, uh, has a lot of impact on you because, you know, you do a very physical job, I believe, right? Um, uh, Yeah, I yeah I'm working like it's a physical job and do a lot of like setups, walking, driving, as well going to work, uh, coming back. I use a lot of energy. Yeah, so you know, um, for example, in your case, um, you know, we cannot probably we cannot avoid that. Because it's part of your job, um, but maybe you can try to, you know, whenever you don't work, um, maybe you know, try to move as less as possible, right? Try to chill, be at home, sit down, eat, relax. I'm chilling. <laughs> Sorry? I'm chilling, but sometimes I uh, even uh, how to say. I'm going out somewhere, if I feel okay, then I consume even more energy. Yeah. 
So, you know, that again, this might be to reverse angina because, you know, if, if that's what you do for for a living, you know, that's just fair. You know, it's not like you're gonna stop, <laughs> but um, well, the, the, the option is to eat more. <laughs> Just eat more, make up for it. But no, maybe, you know, coming, going forward, you know, try to notice if you, you know, if you're that kind of person that, you know, tends to move a lot and stuff like that. Maybe, you know, you can notice. Um, let's see. Oh, Tarash. Cool. So, yeah, have you got a question about this? No, I just need, according to this, uh, uh, according to this, I just need to eat more calories. <laughs> <laughs> but at the moment, uh, you know, the results have been, have been good. You've been, you know, last few weeks you've been kind of um, gaining a little bit. Um, <laughs> now I'm, I'm going to give you this protocol and you will see it's going to, it's going to make you blow two kilo of muscle in two months. That's the goal. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to stop the sharing. <clears throat> there you go. And, um, cool. So, just thank you very much for being on the call. Thank you, Adolf. And um, as I said, please, 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 anything, you know, just let me know. And um, so today's Thursday, yeah, so Saturday is the check-in. Um, and then obviously we will chat uh, then about how your week goes and stuff like that. But I will, now that we hang up, I'm going to send you the protocol. And um, yeah, so you can start buying the stuff and, uh, and then we get some new games. Okay. All right. Awesome. Have a good evening and uh, speak to you soon. Good. See you. Bye-bye.